avan how did they make their way through to jaipur today if you get onto the the jaipur vrindavan highway it takes you 3 and a half hours by car took the dt is the best part of 70 80 years to make their way um uh, and we'll talk about why it took them so long and what transpired in between it's a it's the ultimate uh, adventure in in case you're into adventures and uh, and you know and thrill and thrillers people people lo- love to say thriller thriller and action movies this is the ultimate action movie the the story of shri shri radha govind ji so in radha kund and we are now in the year 1669 where the deities of shri shri radha govind dev ji are in radha kund and the they are they are received by the baba ji is in vrindavan and and the members of the jat and the gujar community uh, radha kund is in a very desolate space it doesn't have the opulence of vrindavan certainly doesn't have the patronage of the kings of uh, rajasthan and so the the, the deity uh, worship is done with just natural ingredients whatever the devotees can find and that mode of of worshiping the deity is known as prakritika parivesh prakriti means nature so whatever you find in nature so the baba ji is find mud pots and clay pots and design plates made out of mud and clay uh used used tulsi manjaris to make garlands and, uh, and 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 garments for the deities and in this way worship the deity of uh, radha govind ji and this is the, the the standard of worship that they get with with a lot of love and devotion on part of the selected inhabitants of radha kund who know that the deity is the, pro- the most prominent deities of radha govind ji are uh, here in town so over a period of time uh, the first stop that they, they the, the deities uh, reach is actually the samadhi mandir of uh, ragunath das goswami which is also in radha kund and that is the place uh, under a banyan tree where the deities are first worshiped before a makeshift temple is made for them before they're taken to a house so that aurangzeb at least and his soldiers don't come to know that the deities are in radha kund so the they they used the deities have been used to living in a very elaborate sandstone temple for 79 years and now they they're now being worshiped in a in a small house in radha kund and the the reason why the worship was still ca- uh, being carried out by such brave people in radha kund is because all those great souls in radha kund uh, th- there's a famous saying in bengali in the gaudiya vaishnavas where where it says pratima nahi tumi vrajendra nandana and w- what it means is we, for you for us uh, these deities you're not a pratima or the, the word a word which is generally used is idol worship or statues or murtis they, that uh, but they are saying they are not you're not a pratima for us you're not just an idol or a statue you are you are you are the son of maharaj nandana you are rajendra nandana and that is the mood in which the the and and this is the basic essence of all of deity worship all the rules and regulations and there are many rules and regulations around deity worship but the basic essence of deity worship is to understand that the deity is a person and deal with the de- and deal with the person in such a way so if you have someone at home you look after their needs uh you, you wake them you ensure they sleep at a certain time you ensure they have woken up at a certain time you ensure they are fed you ensure they are bathed you you ensure that they are looked after it's the same thing with the deities the deities uh, in fact we are we have the supreme person you may have a person at home you have the supreme person here in the temple or at home if you have deities at home and that's the standard that uh, these devotees were this is how in, in, even in such austere circumstances the the devotees in radha kund were able to maintain deity worship um when the deities actually left vrindavan just as krishna had left vrindavan 5000 years ago when krishna left vrindavan 5000 years ago the they, all the inhabitants of vrindavan were grief stricken and when akrura took krishna we also explained in uh, last week's class that they stopped blowing the conch shells in all the temples in vrindavan because akrura had blown the conch shells in vrindavan 5000 years ago to signify that he's uh, he's taking krishna and balram to to mathura or kamsapur as they used to call it then and and ever since then in vrindavan the you know the the blowing of the conch shell implied that krishna is leaving us and it used to be a it used to be a reminder of that sad event where krishna left vrindavan which is why they used to not blow conch shells in the temple 
and and the uh, and there have been so many uh, there are many chapters explaining the feelings of the gopis and the and, uh, and um, yashoda maya and nand maharaj and all the other everybody in vrindavan practically from right from the devotees in in human bodies to the cows to the peacocks to the mountains to the trees everyone feeling the separation of krishna and vrindavan uh, there's in there's a medieval orian poet named bhakta charan das and with the with these teachings now available to us through the vrindavan research institute uh, in a joint project between iskon uh, under the stewardship of his holiness indradumna swami maharaj my spiritual master and the vrindavan research institute we now have uh, access to some of the accounts of the time and one such account of the time is a letter written back then by by an orian poet called bhakti charan bhakta charan das and the name of the manuscript is called mathura mangal and there's a section in the mathura mangal that talks about the feelings of the devotees in vrindavan when the deity is left and it was the same exact feeling coming back to our story which the the inhabitants in vrindavan now echoed this exact same sentiment now that shri shri radha govind ji had left vrindavan for radha kund in that in the dwapar yuga they had left for mathura krishna and balram now in the at the start of the kali yuga they had left for radha kund and they didn't even know most of these poor devotees didn't even know where radha govind uh, dev ji has left them and gone he was their heart and soul he was their protection so in the mathura mangal uh, it is said and it's a, it's a bit long so i'll read it uh, fairly quickly staring at govinda's lotus face the gopi said oh mohan now that you are leaving for mathura who in your absence will look after us your departure will mean our death do we ne- yeah do we need to live any longer now that our only support mohan is leaving for kamsapur better kill us by po- poison and live in peace there your absence for a moment bears heavily on us let alone for two or four days when you went to the vrindavan forest leading the cattle along in the company of your cowherd friends we used to wait anxiously for your return seeing you coming back we gained our lives as lilies bloom cheerfully when the moon shines we would be filled with joy as as the as a lotus would be at the sight of the sun or a blind man getting back his eyesight or a poor man upon finding a gem perturbed to see krishna departing the fish eyed gopis oblivious of the presence of respected elders cried out o oh krishna what provokes you to kill us so mercilessly we are not putanas of gokul with nobody to protect us o oh krishna you will see with your own eyes how by taking poison we will kill ourselves let the 14 worlds know that we lost our, li- our lives as krishna deserted us he did not not kill us he did not kill us myself but his departure from gokul caused our death he did not kill us himself but his departure from gokul caused our death oh krishna you will be guilty of killing the ones you have sheltered have you forgotten how many times you you have saved us from peril on the eve of your departure you are taking those lives you have saved oh krishna it is not fair you are not the same govinda as benevolent as before so these were the sentiments of the residents of vrindavan at the time and these were the sentiments of the of the brajavasis back in 1669 as well back in the summer of 1669 so anyways in radhakund the deities uh, stay but they stay for, for a period of 2 years shri radha govinda dev ji stay in uh, radhakund for a period of 1669 to 1671 but why just a period of 2 years because what was the original reason that the dt is moved anyone from vrindavan to radhakund no no why did the dt is originally moved from vrindavan to radhakund because of aurangzeb because of fear of aurangzeb and fear of him getting uh, getting to know where the dt's are and and sending his henchmen again so there were rumors that are, they were starting to float now that maybe the dt's of radha govind uh, dev ji are in radha kund and just as in the dwapar yuga where kamsa used to send his search patrol and all these demons around to find where krishna is in the kali yuga aurangzeb still had his men on the hook to find out where the dt's of uh, shri radha govind ji are i mean he was so hellbent on destroying them so the rumor uh, ultimately we have to realize this is all the lord's leela i mean like the acharyas explain 
if krishna wanted is is the resident or in every of each of our, uh, in each of our bodies in the form of the parmatma and if he wants uh, 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 with his at a second's notice we can lose our lives and he could have killed uh, kamsa and all those demons he didn't physically need to do anything similarly now unless radha govind dev ji want anything to happen nothing does happen so this is all the lord's leela and as the story unfolds you understand that there are so many past times within the past time uh, and and you understand why this leela manifests and why it is the way it is it basically gives so many devotees the the, the chance to perform a, uh, devotional service in some very extreme and austere conditions in very extreme conditions which uh, which is quite glorious so so back in from 1669 to 1671 the deities are in radhakund so rumors start to spread around that maybe the deities of radha govinda dev are in uh, radhakund and our hero shivram goswami uh, is the first to uh, to know, understand that these rumors have surfaced so what he does is he writes to the king of rajasthan at the time the the capital of rajasthan was in a place called amer in in modern day india it's 11 kilometers from the city of jaipur which came in much later so raja ram singh is the king of amer and uh, we, there there are the original manuscripts in the vrindavan research institute the original letter written by shivram goswami to raja ram singh requesting him to give protection to the deities of shri shri radha govind ji uh, and Ra, uh, raja ram singh uh, such a great king at the time immediately springs to action and he writes he sends a message to his nephew uh, who is uh, his nephew whose name is udar singh who is uh, the king of one of the 12 holy forests of vrindavan kamyavan anyone here been to kamyavan no oh, okay well the next time you go to vrindavan you should make a make a trip to kamyavan it's one of the 12 holy forests there's the, you can have another lecture series on the glories of kamyavan itself so anyways uh, and kamyavan uh just just uh, trying to connect what we just heard to modern day geography in india which state in india is vrindavan in anybody uttar pradesh and then you have the king of rajasthan telling his nephew that you've got to do you you have to give the deity shelter to protect them from aurangzeb and that's the king of rajasthan so kamyavan even today is on the border of uttar pradesh and rajasthan it's a fair distance away from radhakund so again the legendary bullock cart comes into action with the hay put on it the the deity is put in the sandbox and uh, and wrapped around and put in that bullock cart the and the deity is the three sets of deities the deities of shri shri radha govind dev ji the deities of kashishwar pandit which is the gaura govind the deities and the deity of rinda devi all are transported overnight from radha kund in 1671 to kamyavan where the uh, you know under the direction of king uh, raja ram singh his nephew udar singh the king of kamyavan gives uh, shelter to the deities or the, or it's the other way around the deities give shelter to him or give him a chance of devotional service now the, there was there were a few reasons and th- this just goes on to show the intelligence on the part of our hero shivram goswami first he chooses the 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 opm method to get the deities smuggled out of vrindavan into radhakund now he strategically chooses kamyavan as a place via king raja ram singh to keep the deities there because the, you know the kings of, the the soldiers of aurangzeb are patrolling everywhere whether it's uttar pradesh or rajasthan i mean they practically rule over the whole country the whole subcontinent at the time so why is it that kamyavan would be a safer abode for the deities Uh, and that's also because that's because of a few reasons in in those times uh, the rajputs and the the moguls had different alliances and the, the meaning of the word alliances were it was a convenient negotiated arrangement between both parties to allow both of them to prosper and and they had these alliances where if certain rajput kingdoms pay a uh, a yearly tribute or act as a vassal state of the moguls the moguls would not attack them and 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 the king raja ram singh were also protected under that act so any part of his kingdom would not be attacked by aurangzeb and kamyavan was part of his kingdom right the border of his kingdom which is where why uh, shivram goswami decided that okay the deities will be safe in kamyavan so that such strategic and uh, that such strategic foresight 
on the part of Shivram Goswami. You know, he's just a simple devotee. He's a simple Brahmana till, uh, till two years back, uh, the head pujari of the temple of Sri Sri Radha Govinda Dev Ji. But now he's suddenly got to be pujari. He's got to plot a way to save. First, he's got to find a way to save the deities when Aurangzeb soldiers are coming the next morning. He's got to find a way to take the deities out of Vrindavan to Radha Kund. He's got to constantly be on the move and have his pulse on the situation. What an extraordinary, uh, what an extraordinary devotee. And then in th th this way, the deities make their way into Kamevan and they stay there for four years. And, and the whole situation is what you would call, uh, you know, we call it the lull before the storm or it's a peaceful standoff between Aurangzeb and the Rajputs where Aurangzeb knows that the deities of Radha Govindaji are here in Kamevan but because of his strategic alliance with the Rajputs, he doesn't order an attack. But then over a, what happens uh, over a period of four years is after six, from 1671 to 1675 while the, uh, the deities are there, there's in that part of, at that point in time in India's history you have one of the first rebellions, one of the uh, first amongst many rebellions against the, Raj, against the Mughal kingdom and this time it's on part of the Jats and the Gujars. So the Jats and the Gujars, the farming warrior class community now start attacking Mughal outposts in the middle of the night and they now introduce a new kind of warfare previously non, not seen. Previously we were used to Kshatriya kind of warfare in India where you, uh, you know, you kind of know when your army is coming to attack, where your enemy is coming to attack you. They dispense with all of that and they suddenly out of nowhere, you know, in modern warfare they'll call it guerrilla warfare. So they, in, they introduce the concept of guerrilla warfare where suddenly in the middle of the night they'll come to a certain outpost where they outnumber the people in the outpost and destroy the outpost and go away. And this way they start, uh, you know, destroying different parts of the the Mughal army at certain outposts in that in near Kamyaman. And when they start doing that, it perturbs Shivrama Goswami because it means that that peaceful standoff situation that he has is on a very delicate balance. I mean, we've had, we, we, we had what was a peaceful standoff between Russia and Ukraine for the last 12 months. And, you know, it, it was a very delicate kind of situation and suddenly you've had the outbreak of war, which is still going on. And Shivrama Goswami kind of saw that situation back in 1675 in Kamevan. So he again writes to the king, Raja Ram Singh. And he tells him that just like your forefathers from the time of Jai Singh the first, Jai Singh the first protected these deities, we seek your protection again for, uh, for Radha Govindaji. Uh, actually, we are very lucky uh, where, uh, where there is another really f glorious event that happens and we have got lucky that we have got access to the archives at the time that we now know about that event. So the devotees now plan that they are going to take that they are going to shift the devotees out of Kamevan to a small town still quite, quite a distance away from Kamevan called Bhattara. And the devotees decide that they are going to now take the deities out from Kamevan to Bhattara. But while they are doing that, the next day when they prepare the deities, they put them on the bullock cart again. Here we go again, round three. They have Radha Govinda ji on the bullock cart, they have Gaur Govinda deities on the bullock cart. The bullock cart that has the Gaura Govinda deities and Radha Govinda ji deities start moving. But the third bullock cart doesn't move an inch. Which deity is in the third bullock cart? So we spoke about the three sets of deities. Gaura Govinda, Radha Govinda Dev ji and which was the third? Which was the, th the deity of Vrinda Devi. Well done Kamsari Prabhu. So the deity of Vrinda Devi doesn't move a single inch. They, they use the horses, they, they bring the strongest horses, they bring many strong horses to pull the deity. She doesn't move. They try their luck with a local elephant. The deity of Rinder Devi refuses to move. And, and uh, Shivrama Goswami is quite perturbed. He's like, I'm, I'm trying my best to move these deities and you don't know when danger will fall us here in Kamevan. But as he's thinking that uh, in that way, Vrinda Devi herself comes to uh, Shivram Goswami in, in his dream. And the next day he actually recorded... Uh, this dream and thankfully by the grace of uh, Indradum Nuswami Maharaj and the Vrindavan Research Institute, we have access to what Vrinda Devi said to him in the dream. So Vrinda Devi appears to Shivram Goswami in the dream and these are the words of Vrinda, spoken by Vrinda Devi herself. So she says, O my servant Shivram, I will stay back in the forest of Raja and my master Sri Govinda will go further in the princely states. I desire to remain forever in the pastime places of Lord Govinda along my eternal companions, the parrots. 
I give my blessings to you to continue with your service to Govinda. So this is Vrinda Devi. This is another indication that, you know, it's just a, this, this is a leela of the Lord where the Lord and his confidential associates decide when they move in, where they, when they'll move, where they'll move and if they'll move. Oh, that's fine. So now they've decided, Vrinda Devi has decided that she's not moving anywhere. So she's not moving anywhere. So again, the deities are taken out of Kamevan and shifted to Bhattara. So what happens every time when the deities are moved to the Vrajvasis? We just spoke about it. What happens to the Vrajvasis every time their deities are moved? What will happen to us if tomorrow someone moves Radha Gopinath out of Sydney? So are you going to feel happy, sad? So, the, so, those, so just as the Vrajvasis were extremely sad 5000 years ago when Krishna left, with uh, Akrura uh, along with Balramji to Kamsapur or Mathura. Just as they were sad in 1669 that he left Vrindavan and went to Radha Kund and we described that with the poem of the Orian poet uh, Bhakta Charandas. Again they are heartbroken that you know he came to Kamevan and now he is leaving the area of Raja altogether. In fact this is the reason why Tulsi Devi refuses to go. She says I will not leave the area of Raja. My, Krishna may come, Krishna may go, but I will not leave the area of Raja. I, I'll, I'll remain here in eternal service to him. So every time, now Krishna is leaving the whole precinct of Raja altogether. Radha Govindaji is leaving the precinct of Raja altogether. So there's a poem that's composed at the time and, and it's, uh, it's a very famous poem for people who are Brajavasis. Mataji here, she's as good as a Brajavasi, she and her good husband. Uh, uh, Braja Prema Prabhu and uh, Sneha Radha Prema Mataji, they are practically Rajavasi, so they might have heard of it. But it's, it's composed by Surdas, the blind poet. And uh, luckily again, to the, to the efforts of um, Indudumna Swami Maharaj and the Vrindavan Research Institute, we have access to that poem of Surdas. And the poem of Surdas is in um, the Braja Bhasha, which is another dialect of Hindi. Uh, I mean, the, the poem is spoken usually in, in a very melodious antara and tone, uh, 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 which is quite beyond me. So, and, and in the interest of time, I'll quickly recite the poem. So it says, uh, and the name of the poem, very famous poem, you can search it on YouTube. The, the, the famous Indian classical singer Shubha Mudgal, she's got a version of this as well. It was actually part of a, uh, it's, it's been featured in the movie as well. The name of the poem is Chale Gaye Dil Ke Chale Gaye Dil Ke Daman Geer. Chale Gaye Dil Ke Daman Geer is the name of the poem. So the lyrics of the poem go, go as such. So it says, Jab Sudhi Ave Pyar Milav Ki Uthat Kaleje Peer Natwar Bhesh Nayan Rati Nyare Sundar Sham Sharir Aap Hi Jai Dwarka Chai Khari Nadi Ke Teer Vrindavan, Vrindavan Vamsi Vat Tyago Nirmal Yamuna Neer Braja Gopiyan Ko Prem Bisrayo Aise Bhayo Bepir Sukh Shyam Lalita Uth Boli Akhir Jat Ahir So the translation is Here is uh, Surda saying Our beloved left all of us whenever he comes in our memory Our hearts So our beloved left leaves all of us whenever he comes in our memory and our hearts start paining. He is dark with beautiful eyes and he is more handsome than Cupid. He left Vrindavan, the sacred tree of Vamsivat and the banks of the Yamuna, forgetting the love of his Vraja Gopis, he became discourteous with us. The poet Surdas quotes, the poet Surdas quotes Lalita Devi, Oh Sakhi, why are you lamenting? After all, he was only a cowherd boy. So first, you know, they're describing Krishna's glories, that he's more handsome than Cupid and how he's constantly giving them pain and how he's left Vrindavan and he's left Vamsivat and to console themselves, they're saying, well, after all, he was only a cowherd boy. <laughs> so why are we lamenting? So, so I mean, it, it, uh, just, uh, you know, one can sit and meditate on, on just this poem for, you know, there are devotees who do this for days and weeks together and People in Vrindavan sing this poem in, in separation of Krishna and to recount that particular episode. Uh, so they are very serious, uh, very, very, very um, serious philosophy but, uh, and we are very lucky that we have access to them. 
So what's the year now? Just, just to check that everyone is still awake. <laughs> so four years now, 1671 too. 1675, here we are in 1675. And we originally started talking about the deities being discovered in 1535. The temple being built in 1590. Aur Aurangzeb allow, uh, you know, issuing the black decree in 1669. And we are here in 1675. And remember, it takes only three and, a half, three and a half hours today by road to get from Vrindavan to Jaipur. So that was one long bullock cart ride. <laughs> so, and they're still not there yet. So here we are, 1675, they are in this place called Batara, which is a very short term residence for the deities. They are only there and now they are without Vrinda Devi as well. It's Gaura Govinda and Sri Sri Radha Govinda Ji. They stay in the place called Bahatara for just two months. And they stay in the place called Bhatara for two months because Shivram Goswami is always a step ahead. Finds that although Bhatara is a lot more secure, it's, all, it's totally covered by dense forests. But it's a very, very austere place. Uh, there, it's very difficult to even gather basic articles of worship to perform deity worship for the Lord. And, and what did we say the most important ingredient in, in deity worship was? To think of the deity as a, as a person and here we have the supreme person. So if, if it's hard to maintain the supreme person, Shivram Goswami, I mean it just tells you that even in such austere circumstances, if he had a chance, he would not compromise on the, the standards of deity worship. To whatever best standards he could offer the deities, uh, the best worship that he could, Shivram Goswami went for that. He, 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 in literal terms, he used to try to shoot the rhinoceros, try to get the best possible deal for the deities, as, as we should as well. So, what does Shivram Goswami do? He writes a letter again to Raja Ram Singh. And Raja Ram Singh again, being the Kshatriya Vaishnava that he is, he says, okay, I've got a fort, which is not very far from, Amer, which is not very far from Batara, and in between Batara and Amer, and it's a proper solidified fort. It was the palace of my predecessor, Maharaj Jai Singh one. And he names the whole fort Govindagar or the, the house of Govindadev. And he says, this whole fort is yours. Not only is the fort yours, there's a local village nearby. I commissioned the whole village to from today be the property of Sri Radha Govindadev ji. And whatever money, uh, whatever revenue we generate out of the village will be used to maintain the standards of deity worship for, for the deities of Gora Govinda and Sri Sri Radha Govinda Dev ji. So he says, there you, there you go. Now you can maintain your elaborate standards of deity worship. And thus the deities come to Govindaghar or their own home where they stay for a period of 25 years. From 1675 to 1800. They stay in uh, Gora Govinda, uh, in, in Govindaghar. But while, while, while doing all of this, you know, Aurangzeb's men are still on the, are still on the prowl. They know that the de these deities have now left that village. They've gone to this, this big fort. And you, you must have, I mean, I certainly wondered that, you know, in comparison to the Mughal army, the Rajputs were not as strong. And, and these were serious risks being taken by Raja Ram Singh. And you can, one can think about, you know, why are they taking such a risk? Like, like we look at um, contemporary, um, contemporary history of what's going on in the world now. You know, one of the excuses be, being given for Russia invading Ukraine is because they thought Ukraine will sign up to the NATO. So they invaded Ukraine. But you don't have any other, you don't have any other countries directly coming and taking part in the warfare because they don't want to trigger a nuclear war. So again, it, and, but, but, so Ukraine is being portrayed as it's the small country against the large country Russia in today's war. So if you use the same analogy, you have the big Mughal army against the small Rajput kingdom. And there's nobody else supporting the Rajputs, nobody else supporting Raja Ram Singh, and, but he's still holding his own and finding his way to protect the deity. So why does, that, why does the king do that? So between, the, there's a letter, between the king and Shivram Goswami, they both come to a common agreement and it's a famous verse from the scriptures. It says, Dharmo Rakshitaha, Raksh, Dharmo Rakshati Rakshitaha. Or the translation is, for one who protects Dharma, Dharma protects him. And that is the instruction that Shivram Goswami gives to Raja Ram Singh, that Dharmo Rakshati Rakshitaha, you are protecting Dharma, so Dharma will protect you, so you don't have to worry. So between 1675 to 1800, oh, there's one, one minor detail I forgot to mention. So when 
when the deity of vrindavan uh, the deity of shri vrindavaneshwari the sorry the deity of vrinda devi decides to stay back in kamevan shivram goswami instructs his uh, oldest son whose name is krishna charan goswami to stay back and he says never leave kamevan and give your life and soul to the worship of vrinda devi so he follows his instruction so anyways uh, govinda dev ji have now moved to govinda ghar where they they found a home of sort a very good home of sorts for the next 25 years but between 1675 to actually 1700 not 1800 sorry 1675 to 1700 there's a few things that happen uh, slightly sad events but uh, or not so sad in the year 1688 the who's the hero of the story so far there's quite a few there's raja ram singh but you got shivram goswami he finally leaves this world in the year 1688 shivram goswami uh, leaves this world and goes back to goloka vrindavan and uh, king raja ram singh is so grief stricken and this this tells you about the kings of the time is so grief stricken in separation of shivram goswami that 10 months later he leaves his body as well uh, so before before this lecture series started i mean before i heard these lectures i hadn't ever heard of shivram goswami anyone here would ever heard of shivram goswami no so none of us but but we had all we all know about the deities of radha govinda dev ji who were in jaipur uh, but not for you know the the efforts or the leadership of shivram goswami i mean we would probably not have been able to have darshan of shri shri radha govinda dev ji today so what iskon has done uh, and i think we are very proud of this fact is that they have composed a pranam mantra for shivram goswami recently So every time you go to Vrindavan, you can chant. If you ever go to the to Jaipur and see the de- deities of Sri Sri Radha Govinda Dev Ji, you can chant this Pranam Mantra for Shivram Goswami. So I'll just read the Pranam Mantra very quickly. Very lucky again to have access to this. So it says, Prabhu Sri Shivram Yakyam Mrityor Hari Sevakam. Prabhu Sri Shivram Yakyam Mrityor Hari Sevakam. Govinda Arpita Pranam Tam. pranami punaha punaha so the translation is i repeatedly pay my obeisances to the goswami named shivram prabhu who was a servant of shri hari till the very end of his life and who also offered all his life heirs in the service of shri radha govinda so shivram goswami ki so okay so we spoke about shivram goswami instructing his older son uh, shri krishna charan goswami to stay back in in kamevan and he instructs his younger son govinda charan goswami he prepares him that before i leave my body you are to now take over the deity worship of shri shri radha govinda dev ji and the deities of gora govinda and so govinda charan goswami accepts those uh, responsibilities govinda charan goswami also introduces something new to the deity worship there which we uh, relish till today uh govinda charan goswami along with his various other exalted qualities is is an extremely extremely expert devotee in making laddus and he makes these special laddus and and sl- uh, slowly those laddus make their way uh, from the temple of shri radha govinda dev ji to the palace of amer where king raja ram singh is now succeeded by another great hero in this whole past time maharaj jay singh too the sec uh, maharaj vijay singh who is uh, who is popularly known as maharaj jay singh after whom we have the city of jaipur and uh, jay singh at the time takes over the throne at the age of ripe old age of 11 11 year old king and just like most 11 year old boys he loves having laddus so when he has the laddus of shri shri radha govinda jay, dev ji he orders them to be made in a much wider scale and distributed in the kingdom which is why today even even today when you go to surya mahal the temple of uh, shri shri radha govinda dev ji in jaipur it's very famous for the laddus that you get there uh, and uh, the, you know the original the, the pioneer of those laddus is shri uh, govinda charan goswami the the exalted son of uh, the illustrious shivram goswami so anyways um, now uh, after 1700 the de- uh, the deities the king um, uh, constructs wants to bring, uh, king jay singh wants to have the deities closer to his home and he makes another fort for them in a place called rajghar uh, where the deities stay for 2 years while the king is making another fort for them another temple for them and he constructs another temple closer to amer he slowly trying to get them closer and closer to him 
He makes it in a place called Kava, which is also called Rupaheda. It's very close to Amir today. And uh, the DT stay there till 1702. In a period of five years now, uh, at 1707, something really good happens in this whole pastime. Uh, after having tried since 1669 to try his very best to, to get hold of the deities of Radha Govinda Dev Ji, Aurangzeb leave, finally leaves his body in the year 1707 at the age of 84. He tries his level best, but unfortunate, uh, unfortunately, for, from a Mughal standpoint, but very, very fortunately for all of us, he is unsuccessful in all his attempts. Uh, and, and, his, uh, and, and his kingdom is also not quite the same. It's been ravaged and attacked by the Maratha army a number of times. And we spoke a bit about what was in Aurangzeb's will in the last class. In fact, we were lucky to get an extract of the will. And we wrote, wrote about how bitter and sad he was till the, till the very end. And he died a very bitter death. Uh, but so there was a question asked last week as to how do we view this whole Leela where the, you know, the, the, the devotees in Vrindavan have to go through such hardship. So you see, as the as the Leela unravels, so what was Aurangzeb's original objective? To destroy the temple of Radha Govinda Ji. Did he succeed in doing that? Did he succeed in, in anywhere getting close to Radha Govinda Dev Ji? Did, did he lose his wealth? Did he lose a lot of his army? Uh, and who dies the bitter death here? And, and, and the devotees have no army. Aurangzeb has all the wealth and army in the world. Just like the Kauravas had two Akshonis more than the Pandavas. But who won that war? So, so will, is it fair to say from, from every, by every calculation, whether it's spiritual, material, metaphysical, uh, by every calculation, by every stretch of imagination, it is fair to say that Aurangzeb lost his war against Sri Radha Govindaji? Yes? No? In, he didn't achieve his objective and died a pretty miserable death. So, so Radha Govinda Jai, Dev Ki Jai. So Radha Govinda Jai uh, win that war. And, and now when Go Aurangzeb dies, there are big festivals held all over uh, Vrindavan and Rajasthan. Uh, practically every place in the subcontinent. Big festivals held. It's, it's, a similar, to, it's similar to uh, the verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the 7th canto where you know, uh, Prahlad Maharaj is... Uh, speaking to Narasimha Dev and saying that even the, you know all everyone in the fourteen worlds is rejoicing that that great the best of demons Hiranyakashipu is no more and uh, you know when such demons die or when when such personalities come to their end then even great saints take uh, uh, great pleasure in such events such as the killing of uh, which is similar to the killing of a serpent or a scorpion. So there's that, that, that verse to that effect in the Srimad Bhagavad. And similarly, the, the, there's rejoicing going on all over, all over the subcontinent uh, upon the death of Aurangzeb. And then Maharaj Jai Singh decides, okay, we don't have to fear Aurangzeb anymore. We don't have to uh, think about what, what he, he is thinking because he's no longer with us. So let's build an elaborate temple for Sri Sri Radha Govinda Dev Ji. So this, we have now come from, finally to the year 1713. And again, he's trying to get them closer and closer to Amir. And in a place uh, called Mansarovar, he, build, he, he names the place Kanak Vrindavan. And he, builds the deity, uh, and he builds a temple for the deities of Sri Sri Radha Govindaji, who are now joined by two other prominent deities of Vrindavan, who also fled, who also fled uh, the atrocities of Aurangzeb at the time. One of the deities is Sri Sri Radha Madan Mohan. And also the deities of, uh, the famous deities of uh, Shri Madhu Pandit, who are also known as Shri Shri Radha Gopinath. So Shri Shri Radha Gopinath, Shri Shri Radha Madan Mohan and Shri Shri Radha Govinda are all now in Kanak Vrindavan in the same temple. In Jai Singh's, uh, pretty close to Jai Singh's palace. He erects, just to mark the whole occasion of their victory over Aurangzeb, he erects a pillar there which is called as Kirti Stamba or the pillar of glory. And then, I mean, over a period of time, and now in, in his mind, he decides that I am going to build a temple for Radha Govinda Dev Ji, like a, a prominent temple. So he keeps, he goes looking for places, and he also thinks that not only am I going to build a, a temple for Radha Govinda Dev Ji, but I'm also going to, uh, going to build a glorious city for all the Vaishnavas. And that will be the city of victory, and hence that city is known as Jaipur. But between the years of 1713 to 1727, 
while he's building the, uh, the, the, that city, the deities move to different places. They move to uh, the, the temple in Kanaka Vrindavan. And in the year 1720s, the deities can't quite wait for the construction of Jaipur and their new temple to happen. So in 1720, the deities try to take the matters into their own hands and Govinda Devji appears in Jai Singh's dream himself and tells him, you've got such an elaborate palace, can't you give me a small space in your own palace? And uh, Jai Singh wakes up and says, what a dream that was. And, and, I mean, what an exalted king, you know, where Krishna is speaking to the king himself. But go, what he does is he writes a letter to, Vrindavan, uh, to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur asking permission for to get the deities to uh, his own palace. And uh, take note of this point. There was a question last week on why did the deities not go back to Vrindavan. There's a clue in what happens here which we'll answer later, probably <laughs> next Sunday. So the, so the deities uh, make their way into Mara Jai Singh's palace in Amer. They're not in Jaipur yet, they're in Amer. While, while the, uh, the city of Jaipur is still being constructed, it's still a good... Uh, four years away, still good seven years away, but the deities decide we can't wait here. Let's, we, we want to move into the king's, to the king's palace himself. So every day he wakes up in the morning and he has the darshan of um, Gora Govinda, Shri Sri Radha Govinda Devji, or Radha Govinda Ji, Shri Sri Radha Madan Mohan and Shri Sri Radha Gopinath. A pretty glorious way to start your day, one would think. And, and then, I think we'll end it. Okay, uh, over a period of time, finally in... Uh, they are joined by Lalitha Devi too in 1725 and in the year 1727 the temple of Surya Mahal, the modern temple of Sri Radha Govinda Devji is built and the deity is moved there amidst a lot of gusto. There's, uh, the, the story doesn't finish yet because every time, you know, there, there are ebbs and flows to the story. Uh, and have you ever wondered, I'll give you a clue into what's coming in the next, uh, next week. So, when, this is the copy of Bhagavad Gita as it is. You all need no, no introduction to this book. Uh, in this book, have you ever wondered where Prabhupada writes here? Where Prabhupada dedicates this book. He doesn't dedicate it to, uh, to anybody. He dedicates it to Sri Baladev Vidyabhushan, who presented very nicely the Govinda Bhasha commentary on Vedanta philosophy. Anyone ever... So, the Govinda Bhasha that uh, Prabhupada refers to, which was composed by Baladev uh, Vidyabhushan, are actually the words of Govinda Devji. And there's a whole pastime into how the Vedanta Sutra was written by Baladev Vidyabhushan. Uh, I think we'll be short of time for that, so we'll carry that. And it, it nearly led to the situation where, where, look, there was a certain sect of Vaishnavas, to, uh, uh, to, to just give you a bit of a prelude, who, uh, who protested that nowhere in the scriptures is Radharani mentioned. So Maharaj Jai Singh, how can, those, how can Radharani be next to Krishna in your palace? Nowhere in the scripture is, is she mentioned. And for a period of time, Radharani was taken out of the palace and placed somewhere else. Uh, and, and, and there was a challenge issue to the Gaudiya Vaishnavas that you need, to, you need to give us authoritative evidence as to why Ra, that, that you have a Vedanta Sutra, that you have a bona fide Sampradaya, the Sampradaya which we all belong to. And unless you prove that you have bona fide credentials, Radharani can't stay with Krishna. So there's the, that whole pastime as well as the glories of some, some really prominent de, uh, devotees of the time including Maharaja Jai Singh uh, next week. Uh, we've still got six minutes. Does anyone have any question? Oh yes, Ravi, Ravi Shankar Prabhu. Yeah, yeah, they're all part of the original de deities, bro. I was just adding that also there was a deity of Baladevji with Brinda Devi and that we didn't even know it but we saw it. That deity is right there when you're going to Bhakti Bihari Temple. That's where have you seen it? It's black color very beautiful. And this one, Mata Ji, she's the only Pujari who takes care of that deity. It's just so fascinating. It is, it is. In fact, Uh, Akbar's wife and we, we, we are going to come to her next week as well. So next week we'll talk about Akbar's, two of Akbar's wives who are prominent Vaishnavis. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, well, there's quite a few things to talk about before we come to Baladev Vidyabhushan but yeah, the, the, the story is nowhere near yet. I, I think if, if this was like a, 
many people in the audience are used to three hour movies we 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 just passed the interval at this stage uh, does anyone else have any questions yes prabhu yeah yeah chetan ma prabhu uh, originally manifested those deities and gave it to kashishwar pandit because kashishwar pandit was very reluctant to leave his association and go to uh, vrindavan to assist shila rupa goswami so uh, chetan ma prabhu said these deities are non different from me and by being in the association of these uh, these deities you have my association so keep these deities with you and go to assist shila rupa goswami in vrindavan anyone else got any question oh well okay then on that note uh we can end the class uh, actually before we end the class if you've got four minutes and given the fact that we've had uh, so many great great vaishnavas and vaishnavis what i will do if i can find yep what i will do is to uh, will we'll end the class on a very positive note Uh, again from the uh, courtesy the vrindavan research institute courtesy uh, courtesy is all in as indradhum swami maharaj we've got access to a poem written by a very famous medieval vaishnava poet which is very it kind of uh, helps us end the class paying our respects to all these great devotees because of which we still have uh, access to shri shri radha govind ji all these heroes we spoke about raja ram singh raja jay singh shivram goswami the the soldier the unnamed soldier whose horse was called pavan who alerted the devotees all the vrajvasis at the time so okay we there's this poem by shrila devki nandan prabhu and it it goes along the lines of it's in bengali so uh, so it goes along the lines of shakala vaishnav pade mora namaskar iti kichu aparad na huka amar hoin chen hoibe prabhu chatur bhakta vrinda bandhana kori shabara charanar vrinda so the translation of the po- uh, of the these this poetry verses is i offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of all vaishnavas praying that i will not commit offenses in my attempts to please them to all vaishnavas who have ever been and to all vaishnavas who will ever be i offer my obeisances unto their lotus feet so shri la dev ki nandan prabhu ki jai shri shri radha govind dev ji ki shri la shivram goswami ji ki shri la prabhu pad ki jai nak radha gopirath shri radhe ki bajayo jayo gora chande arati khusho ba bajayo ho jayo gohra chande arati ko soba ವಿತವಾದಿ ಜಗ ಮನ ಲೋಭ
जानवितवने जग मन लोभ गौरांगे रतिक शोभा जग जन बन लोभा